I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could write out the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This is a pretty cool reaction that was published in 2018 in the journal of organic chemistry, or JOC for short. The volume number is 83, and the page number is 4905, in case you have access to journals and want to look it up. Some important things to note about this reaction is that it's listed as neat, meaning that there's no external ingredients added to this reaction mixture except for air, so it's open to air. And in our atmosphere, we have oxygen, which makes up our air. So oxygen is actually a reactant in this chemical transformation. Now, if you've ever learned anything about advanced molecular orbital theory, you know that oxygen is actually a di-radical, or it's a paramagnetic species that actually has two unpaired electrons. So even though we draw the Lewis structure for oxygen, depicting it with two sets of lone pairs on each oxygen, the reality is that this Lewis structure doesn't actually match the molecular orbital diagram. So in truth, oxygen as a molecule can act like many other radicals that you've probably seen react in organic chemistry, which means that we can have a single electron, which we'll draw as a single half-headed arrow, reacting with this pi bond in this cyclobutane ring. So one of those electrons will come here, and one of the other electrons in that pi bond will go to this carbon. So remember, we depict those with a half arrow. This means that the product formed from this step is actually going to generate a radical species where here we have placed our oxygen, and now we have a radical at this carbon position, and the rest of the molecule looks the same. Now, importantly, in this reaction, you were told that it was neat, meaning there's no other reactants. So what's going to happen is one of these original starting molecules is going to come and react with this species. So we can draw in another molecule and showcase how it's going to react to form, finally, our product after a few more steps. So what's going to happen now that we have this radical is one of the electrons in this bond will come and form an epoxide ring at this position. And the other electron contained in this covalent bond is going to come and react with another one of our starting material species to regenerate a radical which can go on and do multiple reactions further to make a ton of product. Now in this step, we broke this oxygen to oxygen bond and made an epoxide as a part of this cyclobutane ring. So the product of that transformation is now going to be still that cyclobutane with an epoxide at this position and the rest of the molecule remains unchanged. So at this point we have achieved this product. And once we've generated this product, we're actually only one step away from our final product. And since this is at high temperature, what's actually going to happen is an intramolecular cyclization. So what's going to happen is these electrons are going to go over here to form our cyclopropane ring, and these electrons will now be liberated to come over to this side, which is how we get our carbonyl functional group. And that's the final product of this transformation. Now what's interesting about this reaction is it's not the only product that is formed. In fact, when we generated this species where we have our radical, we actually can get another product as well. Because what can happen from here is one of these electrons can come and combine with this other electron to form a new four-membered ring with two oxygen atoms. And the product of this transformation looks exactly as I described, where we still have our cyclobutane ring, and now we have a new four-membered ring at this position, with the rest of our molecules still remaining. And again, we can have a flow of electrons to generate a brand new product. So what might happen is that these electrons will come here, making a carbon to oxygen double bond, freeing these electrons to come to the other side to make another carbon oxygen double bond and breaking this covalent bond between the two oxygen atoms. And that's a side product of this reaction where you would make this dicarbonyl species where we have the rest of this molecule still remaining. So now importantly, these both of these products are made in this transformation. However, this one is made at about 99% abundance, whereas this one is only made in about 1% abundance. But still, I think this is a pretty cool transformation running neat with just oxygen at high elevated temperatures to make two different products. And again, here is the citation in case you're interested in checking out that paper. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, make sure to give it a thumbs up below. For next week's video, I'd love to see if you could figure out the mechanism for this chemical transformation. Drop it as a comment down below if you have any ideas, and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.